I, I have a question for you. Why is there so much misinformation? Why are there so many cover-ups? I, I mean, when astronauts are reporting UFOs, what is the reason, in your opinion, for the misinformation, the uh, cover-up? I would be conjecturing, like most people, it, one of the great mysteries in this whole area is why the cover-ups by all, uh, all the governments, but the most by the uh, United States. Other, other countries are starting to release those information, but in the United States, there is a deliberate attempt to hide this area, and that's probably it, it, the biggest um, a mystery isn't this one. The biggest one is Roswell. Why is the Roswell incident back in 1947 enjoy a higher level of classification than our most sensitive warheads? You're from the intelligence community. You should tell me. Well, well it makes no sense. I agree. And, and it's a mystery. I don't have a conjecture as to why they're doing it, but it's clear two presidents and four congressmen were, have been unable to crack the security that surrounds the Roswell incident. Why? That was 60 years ago. And, and that's the mystery. Obviously, there's all kinds of bizarre stories that have come out of that experience. But the real mystery to me isn't that. The real mystery is why is it classified? Why does the government hide it? And I, I don't have any conjectures. I think those conjectures are just as wild as the other conjectures well, about well, the other. Uh, according to your tapes, uh, this cover-up is very unusual because some 30 newspapers reported it in 47, and, and th then just immediately after, what happened? Yeah, uh, Blanchard, the colonel of the base, when, that, when the Roswell thing first happened, issued a press release that the, a saucer had landed and so forth. Within a few hours, 400 miles away, the, at the, you know, the Brigadier General in charge of the 8th Air Force countermanded that press release and hatched this story about it was a weather balloon and so forth. That starts a whole series of the, mo the silliest, most inane cover-up stories. There's been a sequence of them. First it was a weather balloon. Well, that didn't fly. They went at one after the other. And to the community, it's almost insulting because the cover-up stories are so empty, so foolish, so ridiculous. But, in, but in what about that uh, new technique, digital imaging? Ridiculous. Yeah, it, it's interesting that during when uh, Brigadier General Ramey made his press release countermanding uh, uh, Blanchard's, the, uh, the press took pictures. Many years later, just a few years ago, uh, a guy by the name of Johnson who took the picture, we were able to get the, the negatives, and by using advanced digital uh, analysis of the negatives, they were able, uh, a, a, an analyst by the name of Rudiak was able to use advanced information techniques to unravel some words that were on the memo that was in Ramey's hand. And it speaks of the, uh, the, the victims and the disk that crashed. In other words, this... Actually, she calls it not a plane, a disk. A disk that crashed, and there are victims implying... See, the stories have always said there were four bodies, three were dead, one was still alive. That was the unconfirmed rumors that we heard. Well, it turns out that that memo, that, e that unraveling is regarded as the smoking gun because it demonstrates that the Air Force has been lying all along. Well, these UFOs, they defy laws of physics. Your degree is in physics, yes. I believe. Well, uh, uh, yes, I, uh, the, the thing that is uh, the fundamentals, we want to get right at that, I'm sorry, presuming a lot here on your audience. Um, the UFOs are, have two problems. The one problem is they are tangible. They show up on multiple radars. They leave physical evidence, burnt ground and ra radioactivity and so forth. So they're tangible. They're not hallucinating. Radar sets don't have hallucinations, okay? Right. On the other hand, they make right angle turns at exotic speeds. They go faster than the speed of sound without sonic booms. They, they do things that seem to violate physical laws, and yet they are, they are physical in one sense, and yet they're not physical in another. Now, the other area we need to just acknowledge is this is the toughest area to research because, not only because of all the hoaxes and all the crackpots that are in this area, is because of the deliberate disinformation by the government trying to hide these areas. But the, the, the net reality is uh, Jacques Vallée, the Frenchman, and J. Allen Hynek, the American, are probably the two most of the early pioneers, the two most reputable researchers. They both came to the conclusion that these things are hyperdimensional. They're not extragalactical. That's a very fundamental insight, by the way, because they, they seem to pose to being something that they're not. But the real point is that we're dealing here with a phenomenon that bridges the physical reality we understand 
and the, a, a, a reality that's outside that. One of the things we've discovered just in the last few years is that some of the constants of physics are changing that we thought were constant. And Scientific American June, uh, in June of 19, uh, 2005 ran an article in which they pointed out if the constants of physics are changing, that implies that our physical reality is actually a subset, a shadow of a larger reality. And when you start dealing in the UFO area, that's one of the other demonstrations that there is a, 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 a hyperdimensional aspect to this. And you actually, from your research, believe that some of the people that report they've been abducted uh, is actually true. That is the spookiest side of this whole area. And uh, probably the classic uh, author in this area is Dr. John Mack, head of psychiatry for Harvard Hospital. He's written a book on this whole area. Clearly, the ab and there was a conference at MIT on this whole subject. There are enormous numbers of people. Some estimates are between over 1% of the population, maybe as high as 2 or 3%, claim to have had an experience which involves being abducted by these vehicles or whatever. And now, their stories are too bizarre to accept on the one hand. On the other hand, when you profile these people, they're above average intelligence, no prior psychiatric history, clearly subject to some serious trauma, and not anxious. They're almost trying to hide the stories rather than reveal them. And, and their stories are similar. That's the thing that's so amazing They're united me. by some common threads. In fact, that was Max's challenge to the conference at MIT. He says, if what these people say is happening isn't happening, what is happening? Because these stories all have uh, uh, common links. Uh, that are I'll, I'll tell you what, hold that thought. When we come back, we're going to talk about how these UFOs tie in with end times. Don't go away. We'll be right back. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. What is behind UFOs? Are they real? What does the Bible have to say about them? When Jesus spoke to his disciples regarding his second coming, he made the intriguing statement, as in the days of Noah, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. In the days of Noah, scripture introduces us to a hybrid called the Nephilim, the fallen ones. What were these creatures? Do they exist today? Could they be related to UFO sightings and encounters? Call now to get your copy of Chuck Missler's two audio CD set, Return of the Nephilim. For a donation of only $22, through this teaching you will discover the truth behind the Nephilim, including where they are from and the role they may play in the end times. You will also discover the truth behind UFO sightings, encounters, and alien abductions. Could these UFOs be fallen angels or demons? Or could they be the Nephilim still among us today? This special two audio CD set will provide you with solid biblical answers to these questions, and you'll understand the end times clearly than ever before. Call now to get your copy of Chuck Missler's two audio CD set teaching, Return of the Nephilim, for a donation of only $22. Shipping and handling is free. Ask for offer number 1243. Call now or write to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. Post Office Box 1918, Brunswick, Georgia 31521. Please specify offer number 1243 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. We now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with Chuck Missler. And Chuck, the only reason you're involved in this is it's a missing ingredient, a missing piece, something that no one looks at in the end times, these UFOs. Um, are, these, are these people around today, in your opinion, these Neph descendants of the Nephilim? I wouldn't be a bit surprised. Well, uh, not necessarily as descendants directly, because I think that's been dealt with. I but follow. I think there's, okay. but, but at the same time, I do suspect that the UFOs are, in effect, a modern-day uh, echo, if you will. And that may be what Jesus was talking about when he says, as the days